Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. In the last one, we've finished up pretty much the rest of the Painted World, and in this episode we are going to finally take on the boss and get the heck out of here. Um, you're going to notice that I am back in Iron Tarkus's costume. Uh, I do feel like his set is the best of the ones I've tried so far, it looks pretty damn cool. And uh, I feel like it's, you know, it's, it's fitting to kill the boss with this one. Makes me look pretty badass, so. On to the boss. Now, uh, we just headed through the shortcut. And if you run up the stairs here, you'll, you'll probably remember uh, that we end up near this bridge that we did not go over before. That is where we are going to head now. Uh, but there is this mini boss, which is a giant skeleton dragon, kind of like the one that we got killed by in the Valley of the Drakes earlier in this Let's Play. And this one is actually a little easier to fight because of the platforms you're on uh, as soon as I can get him to actually attack me. I'm telling you, this guy does come back to life. <laughs> Not yet. Almost. Here he is. Alright, he's angry. He noticed me. And he's coming. With a vengeance. Get out of the way! Alright. Now that he is at the platform, this is basically as far as he goes. And in order to kill him, you just have to hit him. Like most, you know, enemies in this game. But the trick is, if you get too close, he'll lunge at you, and he will occasionally spew this acidic throw up uh, onto the whatever platform you're currently on and that will do a decent amount of damage to you in poison damage uh, and the trick is to get him to spew it onto the middle and try to hit one of his hands I find that to be the easiest method as you, can do, as you can see I'm doing like 500 damage per time he has a lot of like, HP uh, It's almost like a, he's almost like a boss in his own right but a much easier one of course uh, you can run up the middle and hit him here, it's just a little less precise, and sometimes I miss like I just did. And I just try to run away before he can, you know, shoot me again. So if you, but I mean, if you stand up, uh, let's see if we can get him this time. Yeah, you see, you get no inherent benefit to getting that close to him, it's just a little tougher to hit him in the middle. And sometimes he can swing at you and hit you, so... Uh, it's a little less risky if you just stand up here, he spews lava onto the middle, or he spews throw up, and then you can attack his hands. And he's gonna do it again. No, he's gonna attack the outside, and I'm gonna miss again. Wow, I'm already embarrassing myself. I'm only three minutes into the video. One big boy. Yeah, you just want to take it. You just want to hit it. You know, hit him in the hands. Get shots in when you can. Be very patient with this guy. Uh, if you have strong poison reduction gear, you might actually be able to like stand at his hand and just beat the crap out of him until he dies. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it. I was a little too scared to. Uh, but I remember that the boss in the Valley of the Drakes, uh, I could just like stand there right next to him and stand in the poison, and it would barely do any damage to me if I was in like the full ninja gear, which you get in Blight Town because it has such high poison resistance. So yeah, farewell, giant zombie dragon. Today was not your day. Alright, so this is a little bit of a trick. Uh, usually you have to uh, use the key you got in the annex to uh, open the door below me, and you walk across the bridge, fight a bunch of guys, and, and then you know you have to get to the boss that way. This is a little bit of an exploit, in a way, um, and we're going to use that to get to the boss a little simpler, and with a lot less enemies to fight. Now, I just picked up the blood shield, uh, which is actually a pretty solid medium shield. I'm not going to use it right now, because I'm kind of digging the round iron shield here, but uh, a lot of people like the blood shield in PvP, stuff like that, so you know, keep it in mind. If you want to get it, this is where you find it. Now, if you do a jump attack on the legs of this zombie dragon, he'll actually stand up it's like a glitch and then you can jump or roll down to the bridge below and then just book it 
run all the way to the fog gate, which is at the very end of this bridge. Do not fall. You might get hit by a few arrows, but, you know, no big deal. Yeah, see, there's a guy... You know, this guy's shooting me with arrows right now. There's actually, like, a giant, uh, like, tower knight kind of guy that sometimes spawns, but sometimes he doesn't. But if you stay in the area too long, he sometimes shows up. Who art thou? One of us thou art not. If thou hast been stepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I, thine desires shall be requited not. So yeah, you can just run off the edge and leave the world without fighting Priscilla. This land is peaceful, its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. What? I beg of thee, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. Yeah, the inhabitants aren't really all that kind, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, if you can get a good shot at her tail, which I don't think I'll be able to do here, you can actually cut it off and get a dagger, I believe. Uh, but sorry, Priscilla, I'm not leaving without fighting you, so... You know, on guard. What is this trickery? And of course, she disappears in a flurry of smoke and is now invisible. Just to make our lives a little easier. But you can tell where she is because of her footprints. Which give you a good bearing on where she is in the current room. As long as you stand in an area where there is a lot of snow. She actually moves pretty quickly for someone as large as she is. It kind of makes it tough to hit her more than once in a row. And her attacks, since she uses a scythe, do a lot of bleed damage, which can kill you very, very easily if you are not aware of your bleed meter. Some people do like using the blood bite ring on this fight uh, to avoid that that bleeding effect. And a lot of people would take the blue, uh, the bleeding purple moss or the the red moss clumps. I think the yeah bleeding red moss clumps or something like that because they reduce bleed, uh, the bleed meter as well. All good ideas. Uh, and don't stay in one uh, place for too long or bad things might happen. And you might die a horrendous death like that just because you bleed out. The bleed effect does a lot of damage. And that can be the, the easy, you know, the easy effect. You know, that can be just, you know, easy consequence. Uh, now the second time you come into the boss fight, if you die, uh, you have to go in through the fog door, and she will not be waiting there to talk to you this time. She will just attack you. She'll just go invisible right away. Uh, you're going to notice that I did change my gear. I'm now using the Silver Knight set with, uh, you know, some cloth, like a cloth helm, uh, like the ninja helmet or whatever. Uh, that's because I realized that it's actually fairly useful in this fight to have a little more mobility, so that way if she starts, like, attacking me, I can, you know, do ninja flips away. So I decided to use the, instead of the Havel's ring with the Iron Tarka set, I am going to use the uh, Dark Wood Green ring to give myself a little more mobility. And don't be afraid to run away in Estus if you get hit a couple times. She's actually not as hard as I'm even making her out to be. You're going to see me take her out fairly easily in this run. I was just being a little bit of a scrub last time. I actually got a good hit on her there, but I didn't, uh... <laughs> but she caught me too. Uh, now, I'm, I was standing over there, which is kind of a bad idea, but if you stand over here in the snow, you'll, you should be able to see her coming. And as you can see in the middle, she is showing up right now. You can try to actually run around her and then swing. I, I finally got her and then flipped away, and I think that she missed me, yeah. So uh, actually, you know, you want to try to run around the footsteps so that way you can try to hit her from behind. Cause she's less likely to hit you with the uh, with the sight that way. Plus, you you might stand like a you know small chance of getting the tail if you're lucky. And after you hit her enough time, she will become visible again. And although if you you know if you wait too long, she'll become invisible again as well. Uh, but you can make her visible for short short you know bits of time. And that really is your best opportunity to either kill her and or take her tail. Uh, so anyway, as you can see, not as hard as I even made it out to be the first time by dying to her. You just can't see her at first, which makes it's kind of a pain in the ass. But you know, that's it. That's that's Priscilla. You know, what what up? 
so you get twin humanities and 30,000 souls, which is a fairly good amount of souls uh, for beating Priscilla. And then if you killed the NPC invader like I did, this corpse will be here with the Xanthus set. And it looks hilarious, so I'm going to you know, put it on. You know, most of it's not really that crazy, but the helm, the helmet, the giant turban is just so funny looking. So, I'll, you know, I'll wear it for you guys here, but I, I'm not sure how many appearances this will this will have in the rest of the game. I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll just, you know, blow it off for here on out. Uh, a cool thing is the, uh, the, the turban, the weirdest thing about the set, you can actually trade that to Snuggly the Crow. Um, and there are several videos on YouTube that show, you know, what to do with Snuggly the Crow. And you can trade that to Snuggly the Crow for another ring of favor and protection. So if yours breaks or you have to take it off, you know, the ring you got from Lotrek, you can get another one by trading the Xanthus Crown, which is that turban. Just something to keep in mind if you, you know, end up breaking the ring, it might be worth it. Uh, especially if you're someone like me who just never uses the set at all. You know, except for like, you know, joking. Uh, but anyway, you get a homeward bone for defeat for beating the Painted World of Ariamis, and after jumping off the ledge, you end up back in Orlando. You can fight all these guys again if you want to, but if you just stand right where you are, none of them aggro, and you can just use that homeward bone, and you don't have to worry, which is part of the reason why I showed you this. You don't have to worry about that homeward bone taking you back into the Painted World. Uh, it doesn't. In order to go back into the Painted World, you have to actually go up to the painting again. This actually takes you back to the An Orlando Bonfire with the Firekeeper, and that is where we're going to wrap up this episode. Uh, you know, so it was fun. Painted World is done, and starting tomorrow, we will most likely take on the Duke's Archives and Seath the Scaleless. So I will see you guys then. Later.